In this video, we will be going over how to solve the problems for your grade six end of chapter two test review. Question number one. At a high school in the city, 60% of the students walk to school. If 720 students attend school there, how many students walk to school? Our important information I'm going to highlight. 60% of the students walk to school and there are 720 students in all. I can write this as a math phrase. 60% of the students, which we said there are 720, this can be changed into an expression. 0 0.60 of means multiplication, 720. Now, for the purposes of multiplication, we can just write 0 0.6 times 720. 720 times 0.6. 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 2 is 12, carry the 1, 6 times 7 is 42, plus 1 is 43. There's one decimal place in my problem, one in my answer. So the answer is 432 students walk to school, and that is answer D. Question number two. The fraction 2 sixths is closest to which decimal value? In this question, they're asking us to change 2 sixths into a decimal. I'm going to write my fraction 2 sixths. I'm going to convert it to a division problem. This says 2 sixths or two out of six, or two divided by six. Two divided by six. I can also write that as two divided by six. Six is unable to divide two, so I put a zero here. I add a decimal point, put it up in my quotient, add a zero. Two is able to divide 20 three times, which is 18. When I subtract, I borrow. 10 take away eight is two. I add a zero, I bring it down. Six is able to divide 20 three times, which is 18. I borrow. And very quickly, we realize that this is a repeating decimal that will go on forever. We write repeating decimals like this. 0 0.3 with a repeating bar on top. Now, when we go back to our problem, it says which is the closest. So this is the actual answer, but the closest would be rounded, and that is H three-tenths. Question number three. Sanford's shoe store received a shipment of shoes for its newest location. The manager determined that 35% of the shoes were athletic shoes. What fraction of the shoes were athletic shoes? In this question, they're asking us to change 35% into a fraction. 35% into a fraction. Now, this percent, the word per cent, means per 
hundred. Just like the word a cent in money is one penny out of a hundred, there's a hundred pennies in a dollar. The word century means a hundred years. So cent means 100, so this is per hundred. I can change this to 35 per hundred. Now when I look over to my answer choices, I do not see that, and the reason why is because they want me to simplify this. I can divide the top by five and the bottom by five, and I will get 35 divided by five is seven, and 100 divided by five is 20. So my reduced answer is 7 20ths, and that is answer A. Question number four. Mark got 18 out of 25 questions correct on his science test. What percent of the questions did he get correct? So he got 18 out of 25. We can write this as a fraction. 18 out of 25. If we want to change this to a percent, we need to change it to per hundred. So we need this fraction to say per hundred for per cent. I can do this by multiplying by four on the bottom and multiplying by four on the top. 18 times four. 4 times 8 is 32, 4 times 1 is 4, 5, 6, 7, 72. Now this says 72 per 100, which is also written 72 per cent. Now, if you wanted to use division, because we can also say 18 divided by 25, you could do 18 divided by 25. 25 is not able to divide 1. It's not able to divide 8. So I add a decimal point, bring it up into my quotient, and a 0. 25 is able to go into 180 7 times. So I can do 25 times 7. 7 times 5 is 35, 7 times 2 is 14, 15, 16, 17. I borrow. I'm going to add a 0, bring it down. 25 is able to divide 50 two times. Now this is 72 hundredths, and remember when you want to change, I'm going to bring this down here, okay, because we're going to have a little bit more room. If I want to change 72 hundredths to a percent, I move the decimal point over twice, so then that would equal 72 percent. Either method will give you the answer of 72 percent. Question number five. The graph shows the elements found in Earth's crust. What fraction of Earth's crust is aluminum? We want to know the fraction that is aluminum. In our pie chart here, they do not give the fraction, they give the percent that's aluminum. So we want to change eight percent into a fraction. Remember, the percent sign means per cent per hundred. We can write that with a denominator of 100 because this line would say per hundred and then we'd have 8 per hundred. 
we can reduce this by dividing the numerator and the denominator by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 100 divided by 4 is 25. So our answer is 22 20 fifths F. Now I want you to look at option H. If you went through this quickly, you might think, oh, 8% 8, 8 tenths. But remember, the percent sign is actually a fraction out of 100, not 10. Question number six. The fastest fish in the world is the sailfish. If a sailfish could maintain its speed, as shown in the table, how many miles could the sailfish travel in six hours? So we're asked to find how many miles the sailfish travels in six hours. Here they've set up a ratio table. The top row is the number of hours and the bottom is the miles traveled. Now, we know that in one hour, the sailfish can travel 68 miles. We want to know how far it can go in six hours. We're going to create an equivalent ratio using equivalent fractions. I multiply one hour by six to get six hours. Now I need to multiply 68 by six to get the number of miles. So we're gonna do 68 let's see here, 68 times 6. 8 times 6 is 48. 6 times 6 is 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. So that would be 408 miles, and that is answer C. Question number 7. Carlita planted four flowers in nine minutes. About how many flowers can Carlita plant in 36 minutes? This is a ratio question, so we need to find out what we're comparing. We're comparing four flowers to nine minutes, and then we're not sure how many flowers to 36 minutes. So. Um, it doesn't matter what you put on the top or the bottom, but I will say that time is usually on the bottom. So we're going to put flowers, and we're going to compare flowers to minutes. So we have four flowers in our given ratio to nine minutes. We don't know how many flowers we have, that's what we're going to solve for, but we want to know how many we have for 36 minutes. In order to complete this ratio, we're going to use equivalent fractions. 9 times 4 is 36. 4 times 4 is 16. So we have 16 flowers in 36 minutes. So we can write that. 16 flowers. Question number eight. What is the ratio of people to buses? So they're asking us to write the ratio people to buses. Now, when you write ratios, it's important that you do it in the order that is asked in the question. So here it's people to buses. Now, there's 150 people to six buses. We can write it like that, or we can use a colon to represent the ratio. Okay. No, I actually don't need to write this, sorry. 
okay? So 150 to 6 or 150 colon 6. Now, they have H here to trick you, okay? Um, and I don't see 150 to 6 here. So it looks like they want us to reduce. Now, you can reduce this by dividing, I mean, if you don't know your multiplication facts, you could start off by dividing by 2. Um, so we could do divide by 2, divide by 2, just to get started, okay? And you'd have 3 and 75. Now we could divide by 3, believe it or not. So 75 divided by 3. 3 goes into 7 two times, which is 6, with 1 left over. Bring down the 5. 3 goes into 15 five times, which is 15 with nothing left over. Okay? So it would be 3 divided by 3 is 1. 75 divided by 3 is 25. Now, I know that 75 is divisible by 3 because 5 plus 7 equals 12, and 12 is divisible by 3, so 75 is divisible by 3. So you have to remember your divisibility rules if you're not quite sure. And that answer is given to us as answer G. Question number 9. A school population was predicted to increase by 50 students a year for the next 10 years. If the current population is 700 students, what will the enrollment be after 10 years? Right now, the school has 700 students. That's their current enrollment, 700 students. Now, for 10 years, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 years, for the next 10 years, the population is going to increase by 50 students. So this school district is growing, or the school is growing. That's a lot of students. All right. So in year one, they're going to add 50, then 50, then 50, then 50, then 50, then 50, then 50. We're going to keep this pattern going. Okay. Now I could add this all up or I could do 50 times 10 and that equals 500. So the school's population is going to increase by 500. So 10 years later, the population will be 700 plus 500, which equals 1,200. And that is answer C. Question number 10. Linda is processing student records in the nurse's office. There are 625 records. She has 4% of the records still left to process. How many records does she still have left to process? So this is what we know. There are 625 records in all. 4% are still left to be processed, and our question is how many are left to process? So really what this is asking is what is 4% of 625 records? So our question is asking what is 4% of the 625 records? We change 4% to a decimal, which would be 0 0.04, okay? It is not 4 tenths, it's 4 hundredths, because remember the percent is per hundred, so that would be hundredths. Of changes to multiplication, and we keep 625, 625. So off to the side, 625 
times 0 0.04. 4 times 5 is 20, carry the 2. 4 times 2 is 8, 9, 10, carry the 1. 4 times 6 is 24, plus 1 is 25. There are two, I only see two decimal places in my problem, and I have two in my answer. The answer is 25, and that is I. Question 11. A class of 25 students ordered the items shown in the table. They ordered 27 donuts, and each donut cost $1.25. They ordered five one-gallon orange juices, and each gallon was $2. They ordered one package of napkins, and that cost $1.50. If the class agreed to split the cost evenly, how much will each student pay? The question is asking how much does, they're gonna split the cost, and they wanna know how much each student will pay. So we have to find out what the total cost is for all of these items and then divide that by the 25 students. So whatever the cost is, we're going to divide that by 25. So let's find out how much these items cost. First we have our donuts. We, they bought 27 and each donut was $1.25. So we're going to multiply $1.25 times 27. Next they bought orange juice. The orange juice cost $2 and they bought 5. Next they bought napkins. Napkins cost $1.50 and they bought 1. For the donuts, 7 times 5 is 35, 7 times 2 is 14, 15, 16, 17. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 1 is 8. I'm done multiplying by the 7. I add a 0 as a placeholder, and I multiply 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. 2 times 1 is 2. Add those numbers together. 5, 7, 13, carry the 1, 3. There are two decimal places in my first factor. There are no decimal places in my bottom factor. There are two decimal places in my answer. They spent $33.75 on donuts. For the juice, 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 2 is 10. There are two decimal places on my top factor, no decimal places in my bottom factor, there are two decimal places in my answer. The class spent $10 on juice. For the napkins, we're gonna multiply $1.50 times one, and that's $1.50. Now we need to add these items up. When you're adding and subtracting decimals, you need to line up the decimal points. So we're going to have $33.75 plus $10 plus $1.50. 5, 12, carry the 1, bring down the decimal point, 3, 4, 5, 3 plus 1 is 4. The total cost is $4.25. $45.25. Now that is one of our options here, and that's a trick question because sometimes students will s s solve a problem and as soon as they get an answer that's in the multiple choice 
selections, then they think, oh, I'm done my problem. But we have one last step. We need to take the cost and we need to divide the cost by the 25 students. Okay, I'm gonna move this up, all right. So we have $45.25 divided by 25 students. I have a decimal point and I'm gonna bring that up into my quotient. 25 is unable to divide four, so I put a zero. 25 is able to divide 45 one time. I bring down the two. 25 is able to divide. I cover up the two and I cover up the five and two goes into 20 10 times, but I can't fit a 10 in here, okay? So the next number would be a nine. You could do 25 times nine, and that's too big. 25 times eight is 200. Now, we know that 25 times four is 100, so 25 times eight would be 200. That's another way to look at it. Bring down the five. 25 goes into 25 one time with nothing left over. So each student contributed $1.81 and that is answer C. Question number 12. This is a short response question. Refer to the table below. This is the Thompson family budget. House expenses, they spend 43% of their money on house expenses, 16% of their money on transportation, $12 on clothing and entertainment, or 12% on clothing and entertainment, 11% on food, 10% on savings account, and 8% on other. Now remember that the percent sign means per hundred. So this really would, so all of this needs to add up to a hundred and it does. So if they, if their budget was a hundred dollars, they would spend $43 on the house, $16 on the car, $12 on clothes and entertainment, $11 on food, $10 on a savings account, and $8 on other things. So that's kind of, for every $100 they get, this is the breakdown. Now, if the Thompson family has a monthly income of $3,450, how much money do they save each month? Okay, so you look at the savings. So we, the question is how much do they save each month they have $3,450, and their savings account, they put in 10% every month. So you want to find out what 10% of 3,400, or $3,450 is. So we change this to a decimal. By moving, the decimal point would be here, you move over twice, so that's 10% or 10 hundredths times 3,450. Now, 10 hundredths and 1 tenth are the same value. And when you multiply, if you can get rid of unneeded or unnecessary zeros, the better. Okay. So, 3,450 times 0 0.1, 0, 5, 4, 3. There's one decimal point in my problem. There's one in my answer. So the Thompson family would save $345 a month. And that is your answer. Question number 13, extended response. Copy the models below. 
both models have the same area. Model A, Model B. They both, even though they look different, have the same area. Part A, shade 25 hundredths of Model A. Part B, shade 1 third of Model B. Part C, which model has the greater fraction of shaded area? Explain your answer. Part A, shade 25 hundredths of Model A. Let's take a look at Model A. A is made up of squares, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six squares wide, and one, two, three, four, five, six, six squares tall. So the width and the length are both the same, they're six. To find area, you would do the width times the height, or the length times the width, you, you multiply these two dimensions and you get 36. So this is, model A is 36 squares. We want to find out what 25 hundredths of the 36 squares would be. Now, we, know, we can multiply 20, 0.25 times 36, That's we can do that. But you know that 25 hundredths is 1 fourth of 36. Now a fourth of 36 would be 9 because 9 times 4 would be 36. This means we want to shade in 9 squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, part B, shade in one third of model B. Model B is made of rectangles. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rectangles. So this is nine, and this would be one. So it's nine times one, or nine rectangles. I want to do one-third of the nine rectangles. That would be three, because three times three is nine. So we shade in three rectangles. Now, part C says, which model has the greater fraction of shaded area? Explain your answer. Well, we can't compare right now because Model A is made up of squares, and Model B is made up of rectangles. So it's difficult for us to compare. What we can do, though, is change these rectangles into squares. We have nine rectangles. We want to make this into 36 squares. Nine times four equals 36. So each rectangle needs to become four squares. I do this by drawing three lines. And now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36 squares. Now I can compare. Up here we had nine shaded in. And here we have 12 shaded in. So, which is greater? Model B. Now, if you remember, we can also look at it this way. We can compare what is one, because the areas are the same, what is one fourth compared to one third? You can use cross multiplication and one third is bigger. I could use common denominators. A uh, one fourth would be three twelfths, and one third would be four twelfths. Okay, so you can also just compare the fractions because they said originally that it was area. So these are different ways to solve it. Now, it does ask for you to explain your answer, so we're going to do that next.
you could say that because the areas, because the areas are equal, we can compare 25th hundredths to one third. I convert 25 hundredths to one fourth and then compare to one third. One third is greater than one fourth. So model B has the greater fraction of shaded area. Now, it's important to include words from the question in your answer, and that's why I ended with that. Another way would be to actually explain that you converted the rectangles to squares and then counted the number of shaded squares in model A to model B. So that's another way you could have written it. Question one. Write each decimal as a fraction in simplest form. Number one, zero and 75 hundredths. We write this as a fraction, 75 hundredths. Notice that they're said the same. 75 hundredths, 75 hundredths. Now we can simplify. If it doesn't come to you right away, you could divide the top number and bottom number by five. But you can also divide it by 25. In which case, 75 divided by 25 is three. 100 divided by 25 is 4. The answer is 3 fourths. Number 2, 4 tenths. 0 and 4 tenths. 4 tenths. You can reduce by dividing the numerator and denominator by 2. And you would get 2 fifths. Write each fraction as a decimal. Here we have four fifths. I can change four fifths into tenths by multiplying by two and multiplying by two. And I get eight. This fraction says 8 tenths, and I can create a decimal that says 8 tenths by writing 0 0.8. That is 8 tenths. Another way to do this would be to do 4 divided by 5. 4 divided by 5. 5 is unable to divide 4, so I put a 0 in my quotient. I add a decimal point and I put that in my quotient and a zero. Five divides 40 eight times with nothing left over. Problem number four, one twenty-fifth. For decimals, you need to create fractions that are tenths, hundredths, or thousandths, and so on. I cannot change 20 fifths to a tenth. I can change 20 fifth, a 20 fifth to a hundredth. I do this by multiplying by four, multiplying by four, so I get four hundredths. This is written 0 0.04. You have to put a zero here because this is the tenths place value and then this is the hundredths place value. 
another way to solve would be 1 divided by 25. 1 divided by 25. 25 is unable to divide 1, so I put a 0 here. I add a decimal point and another 0. 25 is unable to divide 10, so I add a 0. 25 can divide 100 four times. 25 times 4 is 100. So here I have 4 hundredths and here I have 4 hundredths. So our answers are 0 0.8 and 0 0.04. Question 5 and 6. Write each percent as a fraction in simplest form. 32%. Remember, percent means per hundred. This fraction would be 32 hundredths. Now, I can divide the top and bottom by 2, but I can also divide it by 4. Remember, you want to try to pick the biggest number that it could be divisible by, so that way you don't have as many steps. 32 divided by 4 is 8. 100 divided by 4 is 25. 32% or 32 hundredths equals 8 25ths. Forty-eight percent equals 48 over 100. Now, if you wanted to divide by 2 to get started, you can. All right, that equals 50 on the bottom and 24 on the top. So I'm going to divide by 2 again, and I'm going to get 12 and 25. Now, we divided by 2, and then we divided by 2. To find out what you could have divided by in one step, you multiply 2 times 2, and that's 4. So you could have done 48 hundredths and divide the numerator and denominator by 4. 48 divided by 4 is 12. 100 divided by 4 is 25. So either way, you're going to get the same answer. So that is 12 25ths. Write each fraction as a percent. 7 twentieths and one-fifth. Seven twentieths. Percent means per hundred, so I'm going to make this out of 100. I can do that by multiplying by five on the bottom and five on the top. Seven times five is 35. 35 hundredths equals 35%. Another option would be to do 7 divided by 20. 7 divided by 20. 20 is unable to divide 7, so I put a 0 above it. Add a decimal point and a 0. 20 is able to divide 70 three times, which is 60. You have 10 left over. Add a 0 bring it down. 20 is able to divide 100 five times, which is 100, with nothing left over. This is a decimal. Remember, when you change a decimal to a percent, you have to move it over two times to the right, which is 35 percent. Next problem is one-fifth. We want to change that to a percent or per hundred. You multiply by 20 on the bottom and 20 on the top. So you'd have 20 over 100 or 20 percent. You can also do 1 divided by 5. 
5 is unable to divide 1, so that's a 0. I add a decimal point and bring it up and add a 0. 5 can go into 10 two times, which is 10, and nothing left over. Now, if you're moving quickly, you might think, oh, that's 2%. But remember, when you change a decimal to a percent, you have to move the decimal two times to the right. This creates a space, which we add a zero to to hold that space. So you would get 20%. Write each percent as a decimal. Nine, we have 12% and we want to change that to a decimal. 12% is 12 over 100, 12 hundredths. And I would write 12 hundredths like this. Also, 12%, this is a whole number, and even though there isn't a decimal here because it's like invisible, there really is, you could put one there. And if I want to change a percent to a decimal, I just move the decimal point over two times to the left. So that would give me 0 0.12. We do like to include the zero before the decimal point just so that we don't, that way we don't lose this decimal point. If I were to just write 0.12 and I'm doing math, later on that might just look like this and then eventually just drop off completely. So by putting a zero in the front, it highlights that decimal point. All right, 64% equals 64 hundredths, 0 0.64. Again, I could write 64% with a decimal point after the four because it's a whole number and move the decimal point two times to the left, which would be 0 0.64 or 64 hundredths. Write each decimal as a percent. 0 0.85 is read 85 hundredths. So you can write that as a fraction, 85 hundredths, which equals 85 percent, because this is per hundred. Also, if you have 0 0.85 and you want to change it to a percent, you can move the decimal two places to the right, one, two, and then that would be 85%. 0 0.73 is read 73 hundredths, so I write hundredths. This fraction can be read 73 hundredths or 73 per hundred. So that would be percent, 73 percent. Or you could change the decimal to a percent by moving the decimal point two times to the right and get 73 percent. Replace each shaded circle with less than, greater than, or equal to to make a statement true. We are going to compare two thirds to three fifths. One way to do this is to have common denominators. The common denominator that we could use for three and five is 15. I would multiply three times 5 to get 15, so I have to multiply 2 times 5 to get 10. I multiply 5 by 3 to get 15, and 3 times 3 to get 9. When I compare 10 fifteenths to 9 fifteenths, 10 fifteenths is bigger. Another way to solve this problem would be to use cross-multiplication. 
3 times 3 is 9, 5 times 2 is 10, and 2 thirds is bigger. So 2 thirds is bigger. For 14, we're going to compare 1 eighth to 1 fourth. Now, because they have the same numerator, you can say to yourself, would I rather have one piece out of four if I was cutting up a pie or one piece out of eight? You would want one piece out of four, okay? Because if I had a pie and I cut it into four slices, one fourth would look like that. If I had a pie and I cut it into eight slices, each slice would look like that. So when the numerators are the same, it's a little bit easier to compare, all right? Another way would be to change, um, to have a common denominator. In this case, you could say eight would be your common denominator. And one eighth would stay the same. To get from four to eight, I multiply by two, and multiply one by two, and I would get two eighths, okay? And therefore, two eighths is bigger, so one fourth is bigger. Now, in our model, what we could do is change these fourths into eighths, and you will notice that you have two eighths, and then here you have one eighth. So, one fourth is bigger. Question 15 and 16, find the percent of each number. For 15, we want to find 6% of 38. 6% is 0 0.06 times 38. Now, in previous questions, we said that you could drop a zero. You cannot drop this zero because it's needed. It's not at the end. If for some reason, I'm going to go down here, if I had 0 0.60, I could write that as 0 0.6. But here the 0 is locked in, so you can't just eliminate it. You're going to have to keep all of your digits. So 38 times 0 0.06. 8 times 6 is 48. 6 times 3 is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. There are no decimal values in my top number. There are two decimal places in my bottom. So I go over 2. So it's 2.28 or 2 and 28 hundredths. Question 16. 115% of 212. 115% of 212. Before we even begin, this number or this percent is greater than 100. That means that the, my final answer needs to be greater than the whole value of 212. I'm going to have a number larger than 212. All right, we need to change 115 into a decimal. The decimal point would be behind the five, and to change it to from a percent to a decimal number, we're going to move the decimal two times to the left. That gives us one and 15 hundredths times 212. So we have 212 times 1.15. Five times two is 10, carry the one. Five times one is five, plus one is six. Five times two is 10. I'm done multiplying by the five. I add a zero as a placeholder. One times two is two. One times one is one. One times two is two. I'm done multiplying by the one. I'm now going to add two zeros as placeholders because I have two spots that I want to hold from my bottom factor. One times two is two. One times one is one. One times two is two. In addition, 
In the addition part of multiplication, it is very important that you take the time to write neatly so that all of your columns are lined up. So here we have 0, 8, 3, 4, 2. In my top factor, I do not have any de decimal places. In my bottom factor, I have two decimal places. This means I will have a total of two decimal places in my answer. My answer is 243 and 80 hundredths. I can simplify this by writing 243 and 8 tenths. Both of these values are equivalent. So we have 24, or sorry, 243 and 8 tenths. Originally, we had said that our answer needs to be greater than 212 because our percent is greater than 100, and that is the case. That brings us to the conclusion of our end of chapter two test review, and I wish you good luck on your test.